Hello, I'm Pina, and welcome to the final episode within Perceptions of the Dead. Tyrone has made it his business to help solve the troubles of those afflicted by the undead. But what seems like a case of a being, being haunting may find him risking more than his own life. It's his very soul. Perceptions of the Dead. I'll be the first to admit, there's some a little sad about watching a pirated copy of the original Star Wars trilogy. Well, that's the way to start an episode. It's been out for as long as I've been alive. You'd think I'd own a legal copy by now. Yes, you should. But really, where can you find a legal copy nowadays where Greedo shoots first? Exactly! Nowhere. It's a sad fact of life. I pull another chip from the bag and munch as quietly as I can. I have the volume way down so I can hear the rest of the house easily. The crunching of the chip is almost loud enough to drown out Hans' rant about the Falcon's speed. Well then. My eyes dart up to the girl on the ceiling. She's still staring, wide-eyed, her pupils dilated, and her claws clicking rhythmically at her sides while she sits watching me. I pull out my phone and snap another picture of her, checking to make sure the screen stays empty. It does, and I slide the device back into my pocket. Well then... The owners of the house have been right. They had a ghost, but it was a harmless haunt, incapable of manifestation. The creepiest thing she had done was stand at the end of the hallway and watch me watch TV with their amazing sound system. Okay. She clicks at me and I hush her. As though it wasn't already hard enough to hear, she doesn't respond and I regret not downloading a version with subtitles. <clears throat> I've been here for almost a week. So far, only Little Miss Claus has shown up, and it hadn't been hard to identify her. She's the ghost of a girl who had suffered from an acute case of depression and took her own life. Well, that's something I- Apparently, she did the deed with a pair of scissors, which explains the increasingly annoying clicking scissor claws. Her family had sold the house after the loss of their only daughter. It eventually ended up in the hands of the current owners, the ones who had hired me. Their descriptions of the haunt had pretty much been a dead ringer of the girl. Okay. They had, of course, complained of cold spots and objects disappearing and reappearing elsewhere, but... Odds were high that they were misplacing their own stuff and giving themselves the chills. Same way any scary movie can. For the chills, I mean. Okay. Good old-fashioned forgetfulness explains the moving stuff. Okay. The girl keeps at her clicking. Her bloodied claws are writhing as she stares. Sitting on the ceiling as though she had chosen to break a few laws. Starting with gravity. Alright, let's talk to this ghost. Answer me a question, ghost girl. Why does everyone who's dead seem to have black hair? I mean, really. Do gingers actually lack a soul or something? Wow. Before she has a chance to answer my question, a knock comes from the door. Hello. Someone called the cops on me again. I'm gonna give them a goddamn reason to. I'm not an effing squatter. I was hired to be here. I free myself from the ensnarement of the amazing plush furniture and trudge to the door. Throwing it open, I find someone new. You're still here. Hello, sexy lady. Uh, yes, yes, I am. I, I'm still working. Well, not right now, actually. I'm taking a break while some things are settling. And, uh, you are... You know, most of the other neighbors think you're a squatter. I grimace. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've had to talk to the police twice already. What are you even working on? I thought that they were done with renovations months ago. Let's tell the truth. Yeah, like I'd do something as psycho as that. The owners reported some odd noises. Okay. Creaking, <laughs> groaning, rattling. The kind of noises you don't want to be hearing in a newly renovated home. Okay. The thing is, their contractors haven't been able to identify the source or even replicate the issue when on site. I do construction. I'm in between jobs right now, so they're hiring me to stay here until the issue occurs and use my expertise to identify and resolve the problem. Okay. That sounded pretty believable, not to mention oddly close to the truth. <laughs> It'd have been enough for the police both times before, after all. Okay. Well, that and a Skype chat with the actual owners. 
That makes sense. So, what, you're sleeping on the floor waiting for the noises they were reporting? Yep. I don't have to sleep on the floor, considering it's fully furnished. You don't think it could be the ghost that's rumored to haunt this place? I forced Maybe. Sleep, and she immediately fled. Yeah, I'm not the superstitious type. Everyone knows ghosts aren't real. Everyone was wrong, of course. But I wasn't going to admit that right now. Yes. <laughs> Look, I didn't... Though if it's a long-standing rumor, it might have been something to do with the foundation. Do you know how long this building has been haunted? <laughs> she flushed further and bit her lip. What was she doing here? I think she likes me. Because I'm black. I don't um, know. That might I have something know. to do with At it. At least ten years. That's when my family first moved in over there. She points to what was more or less a mansion across the street and a few houses down. Not that any of the other houses were less impressive. This was kind of a high-end neighborhood, which was a large part of the reason I had met law enforcement twice already. Yeah. Hmm. I suppose I'll have to go because I'm black. My level. See if I can find anywhere that may hide a seam in the foundation. Do you need help? Okay, seriously, what was her deal? No, no, I've got it just fine. Oh, okay. Well, it was nice to meet you. You too, kid. Well then. She stands there watching with the eyes of a puppy as I close the door on her. I look back to the clicking ghost on the ceiling and realize that I got more heebie-jeebies from talking to that girl than I did watching movies with a ghost hanging above my head. I nearly jump out of my skin as my phone goes off. Okay, that was in the right ear, so I thought my phone was going off. I don't know why. Looks like I have another job after this one, Snippy. She clicks the same as she had before, unresponsive to my attempts to converse with her. Which is a good thing. I mean, she's a pacifier. No need to gank her. She'll fade naturally. Okay. I answer my phone and wait for the words. There's a moment of silence. Uh... Is this the boy in the Dylan's house? How did you get my number? I voice immediately. I hang up. Her knock falls not a moment after. I heard your phone ring. You answered at exactly the same time. Maybe she had gotten my number somewhere, caller ID or something in the house. Maybe she didn't realize the significance. Uh, how did you get my number? Well, way to maintain an air of mystery. Huh? Aren't you supposed to have some line like La La Photogen or something? No, the caller is supposed to say that, fuck. Did I just say that? Oh. An awkward pause hung itself. Okay. Like I was thinking about doing. Can I come in? It feels odd to talk about this kind of stuff on the other side of the door when you're right there. I grimace and let her in. How did you get my number? I read about it on 4chan. I wasn't sure it was you. You don't mention 4chan! Now, though. I had my suspicions from the moment you arrived. Someone posted my number on 4chan? You're nothing like I imagined from the urban legends, though. What, were you not expecting a black guy? <laughs> well, I was expecting someone tall and dark, so I suppose I was right in a sense. Oh, that's brave. A race joke. Yay. Why are you making it about that? Because I'm hoping it makes you feel uncomfortable and you'll leave. <laughs> So, is it true? Is anything here? I almost turned to check on the girl in the ceiling, but maintain my gaze. Nothing that the tenants have to worry about, it would seem. That's an evasive answer. Will you leave if I give you some information? Maybe. Yes. Well, maybe. It depends on what you tell me. I'd figured as much. I'm a spiritualist. I work for folks who think they have ghosts. Okay. I flip up my hood. With the appropriate ambience, I strike a much more intimidating character. The girl's face paled a little. <laughs> no kidding. The hood is actually one I stole from the body of a serial killer. His psychic residue left it with an aura of violence that would invoke fear. It's a long story. Well then. What more would you know? Are they real? Yes, but they're so rare, you will never encounter one in your entire life. It was okay. the half truth. She wouldn't. She didn't have the spiritual perception. The lie lay in the rarity, as advertised by the clicking of the girl on the ceiling. Oh. Okay. Disappointment 
Good. It shouldn't take much to push her towards boredom and a departure. She looks around the house, the disappointment slowly spreading to her face. So there's no... Why does she stop? I follow her gaze to the girl on the ceiling. The clicks grew louder. <sighs> the ghost stood up in a violent... Oh no. She could see it, and it hurt. Oh yay! All at once, it rushed her. Claws sweeping wildly as its seizure-like movements brought it closer. Fear had taken the girl's voice. Should I kill it? No, it's harmless to almost everyone. There's only one thing to do. I roar. Roar! I always feel like this when I roar. To tell the truth, I still don't even know what I'm really doing. But I can feel myself die. Just a little. Unless the girl on the ceiling stops in her tracks. Yes. A moment of pause and she retreats. Sitting back above the TV where she had watched me earlier. Okay. I let out a breath as my soul snaps back into place. All right. Behind me, I hear desperate gasping. Great, maybe a panic attack will scare her off. Slowly she raises her arm. I follow the finger. It's not pointing at the girl on the roof. There's someone out there. I turn to the glazed glass door. Pressed flush against the glass is a face without features and hands with fingers too long. For the first time in years, I felt my blood run cold. Is it salad fingers? No. What's wrong? Her voice is still panicked. Scream again! Make it go away! I try to speak, but my voice catches in my throat as its hand glides smoothly to the doorknob and the handle begins to turn. I lunge to turn the deadbolt. What's wrong? What is it? Why can't I speak? Scream again! The handle well, stops then. rattling. The form steps away from the door, fading into obscurity of the frosted glass. No. No what? She was in shock. It was a defense mechanism. I wish I could easily overcome my fear with it. We need to figure out a way to escape. Yes. I've grown complacent. Even the most violent specter I've encountered as of late had never actually threatened my life. Okay. Why can't you deal with it? Why are you scared of it and not the woman with bladed hands? That's the thing outside? I call it a slender. It's a slenderman! I don't know what it is. I don't know if there's more. Slender? You call it a slender? Like Slenderman? I knew it! I nod, watching for movement outside the door. The last one. I wince just thinking about it. I've only ever met someone like me once. It killed them. It doesn't obey any of the rules. It... it... In the distance of the back of the house, I hear a rattle. It slenders out its own rules. Creak. She gasps, then stops her breath. Silence falls as even the clicking stops. It's inside. Oh god, it's here. Why did I come here? The ghost on the ceiling scuttles away, hurrying up the incline above the stairs. Okay. I try to steady my breathing. Slowly, I lean over, peering around the corner, down the hallway to the back half of the house. As still as the grave, it stands, a silhouette in the hallway. Fuck. Should I move? Should I run? The decision is made for me as a hand closes around my own. The sight is gone as I feel myself tug backwards. I turn, following the girl from across the street up the stairs. Why are we going upstairs? There's nowhere to escape from there. It's too late to change my mind. Typical horror movie. Behind me, at the foot of the stairs, it stands. Still a stone. Run! I flee, retreating to the safety of the master bedroom, locking the door. What was I thinking? I should have just kept running. Why did I stop? Why did I think you would be different than anyone else? What? Wait, what do you mean, little girl? I thought you were strong. I mean, you are strong, that's obvious. You were able to travel so far. I just took a plane. Jesus, you're that strong? You can keep up that level of manifestation long enough to fly on a plane? Oh. I mean, I can appear within ten miles of where I died, compared to the boy that those creatures devoured. Wait, what? 
What are you talking about? I've never met a ghost as strong as you. I'm not dead. Abruptly, she stops in her tracks. Are you kidding? How can you be so strong and not realize you're dead? I'm not dead. Okay. I'm thinking I'm going to end this here because it's strange and unusual for him to have a reaction like that. Um, that being said, um, this one's getting good. I like this one better than the ice cream truck one. So, that being said, if you like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Always remember to keep on, Ooh, keep on ranting.